Welcome back. It's been almost two months since I actually recorded a video. Um, not sure how I remember to do this. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, today, I really wanted to make a drift build. Or, or do a drift build. Um, of this... The th 2009 Audi RS6. This thing has a twin turbo Lamborghini V10. Essentially. Uh, it has 570 horsepower. And it's all wheel drive. That is 65 more horsepower than the E60 M5 and the M6 uh, they're both V10 this thing has twin turbos the thank thankfully the BMW doesn't so it sounds way better but this thing just kind of sounds like a Lambo so it's fine this thing has all-wheel drive the E60 doesn't and that makes makes this thing a lot more understeer in the corners. It's a heavier car. Um, it's 3,700 pounds, I think. But it launches pretty hard. Also, I think this is... Well, the next... The um, generation after this, the R6, like that one, I think it looks better. But this thing looks very good. Um, oh, you can't make it look like a normal A4. Oh, that sucks. It actually has like a ducktail built in. Like it's not an extra spoiler, it's just built into the trunk. And uh, yeah, that's not a normal R or normal A6s, I think. Uh, yeah. I've checked, we can't put drift suspension on this. If it weren't for that, I would probably not build this car. I would probably just like try and make it a really fast street car. But listen to this. Who needs underground racing when you can just buy an RS6? <laughs> I got a Toy Trooper V10. It has really long gearing. You can feel the weight. It pulls out of corners though. Audi understeer, of course, because that massive E10 essentially sits ahead of the front axle, which is not where you want to put an engine. You want to put it between the axles. I'm not used to the really long and widely spaced gears. Yards, you will arrive at your destination. It only drops like how much? It drops 2000 RPM, but that's like fairly common. But since this thing only revs to six almost 7000, it feels like a lot. A lot of power going to the front. Ignore all that. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I love her in the ball valve. Um, it's not what I wanted to do. Here, let's just head back to the mansion or the manor, as it's actually called, and see how much power we can do, or how much power we can put in this. Hopefully, it's over 800. Hopefully. I would love it if it got more than that. But getting rid of the all-wheel drive doesn't really save us that much. It saves us like 40 pounds. It's not 4,700 pounds. It's not 37. It's 43. I got those mixed up. Um, yeah, it's 4,300 pounds stock, which is more than the 60. I would guess so, at least. We're definitely putting on spacers, because that would look amazing. And, oh yeah, when it comes to wheels, I don't know. I'm not like the biggest fan of these, uh, the stock ones. These ones kind of look cool. I always put those wheels on it. Um, the stock wheels are actually fairly light. Instead of ADV ones, they're not the lightest rooms in the game, but the lightest rooms in the game only save you 16 pounds, which is not that much. But I think I'll go with these, like the twin five spokes, and then paint them. I think I'll do that now. Just install the parts we already put on or added to the basket. Go to the sun and paints. Paint the car. I don't have my colors. That sucks. Um, I kind of want to go something. Like semi gloss, tint the windows. Why? Yes, they are chrome. That's exactly why I want to get rid of them. It doesn't fit. Like this car doesn't have have any like really body mods, which kind of sucks. Because I would love to black out the grill, uh, the window trim. And all of that, but I can't. Which sucks. Um, we're gonna do all of this. I feel like this is still gonna be a fairly heavy car. Drifts. Oh yeah. I feel like that's almost too much camber. Like, for the stance. I don't run 5 degrees anyway, but... It's like 900 pounds. This 5 liter V10 is probably really heavy. I'm guessing we're, we're still going to be 3,200 pounds at least. But then turbos will probably add around... 30, 40 pounds, I'm guessing. When we get to that. That's going to make us drive to 7,000 RPM. Hopefully 7,500. Because that would sound way better. Uh, heads, we lose a pound. <laughs> Go up to 5.4 block. We're still the same weight. Turbos, always add weight. But they add 200 horsepower. <laughs> So, screw that. 
and then cooling adds way too much weight. We're up over 30, 40, 300, 3,400. I can't do math. Welcome back after the crash. Yeah. Um, that didn't go, that didn't work out well. The game just loves me. Like, I've played it probably about two hours uh, in total, like the last two months that I haven't been recording. And I haven't had any problems with crashing. The second I try to record, of course, the game crashes within, I don't even know, 10 minutes. So yeah. Now we at least know like what power this will make. Um, but it's first still fairly heavy. Which sucks, but not much we can do about that. So, yeah. Hopefully it sounds sick. Hopefully it does. Back off the camber. I don't like them running that much. Back off to like something like that. I always put like 0.5 degrees of toe out in the front, a little bit toe in in the rear. Always run max caster. I like running a softer front roll bar. This thing is like set up to understeer. <laughs> Hopefully that's not, not too stiff. Uh, something like that. And yeah, let's try that. Does this actually have carbon ceramic brakes in 2009? It revs up quickly. It roasts. Fingers left. It sounds good. But it still feels kind of grippy. I know I haven't changed the tire. It's probably still running street tires. Uh, I still think that's way too stiff. So, that's why I'm gonna soften it a bit. And head back. Not really the easiest car I have driven. It feels like the front end pushes a lot. Which is kind of the way Audis feel usually. But most all wheel drive cars that you convert a real drive car 
converts to rail drive. They usually still have some of the characteristics of an all-wheel drive car, and especially on weight transfers. Well, not on weight transfers, but like transitions. Uh, it feels like the front end pushes a lot. That might just be because it's all drive converted to rail drive. I have a feeling it is a lot to do with that. But it's kind of hard to know. Like, 275s are pretty good. Um, we could go up to that. And also the front. <laughs> I would love to put your 315s on it, but I think it's it's not really that good of a, an idea. Like a change to change the characteristics of the way the car. I can't put words together today. It must be because I'm tired. I hate that you can't do a good burnout in this game in most cars. gearing not a huge fan of the gearing lengthen first second and third and bring let's try some like this maybe I don't know It's a tricky car. It's a tricky car to get right. Which is why I might as well go to Fortune Island. Hopefully it's not raining there too. Yeah. I don't know why, but like every time I go to another map, like the audio cuts out for like two seconds. I don't know why, but it does. And the game like just kind of freezes. Or like catches itself, so I don't really care. As long as the game doesn't actually crash, I'm okay. It's just whenever it crashes, I'm pretty mad inside. Also, it's really warm in Norway again. I don't know if I recorded. The last time I if the last time I recorded, I don't think no, no, because that was that was before the heat wave. It was like 30 degrees here for like multiple days, and it's never that. Um, but now, like two weeks ago, it was like 10 degrees Celsius, which. It was warmer uh, during a lot of days in, in the winter than 10 degrees. I swear to God, at least it felt like it. But it was like 10 degrees for like a week. A week before that, it was like 25 every day. And now it's like up to 15, 20. Again, but it's gonna be like humid and kind of rainy, which just makes it worse.
I don't do well in heat. Anything over like 25 dry air, I'm horrible in. Unless it's windy, then, then it's fine. It sounds really good. I'm actually very surprised the way it sounds. It's way more Lambo than I thought. I'm so glad we finally got this, like, this RS6 in the game. Because we didn't have... We didn't have a lot of, like, the cool cars in... Uh, Horizon 3. We didn't have an E39. In Horizon 2, we didn't have an E46. The Horizon always kind of has the worst car list in my mind compared to the motorsport games. But with Horizon 4, it really got a lot better. Of course, still no Toyota. You have arrived at your destination. And like I saw a tweet. Uh, that someone was asking Toyota why the Supra and stuff weren't in the new Need for Speed or something. And they asked, oh, it's, you can still get the Supra in Gran Turismo Sport, which doesn't include illegal street racing. It's like, games like Need for Speed is the reason why there's still Toyota car enthusiasts. I'm not joking. The reason I love Toyota sports cars is because uh, games and movies and parley, like manga and, and, and like Initial D and stuff. Because of Initial D, people actually like the Corolla. Other than like older Japanese men that actually used to drift them. And people like Daigo, not Daigo Sato, but like Dajiro Yojihara, which is the Corolla was his freaking first car. Man, you're lucky. I guess that's how it is growing up in Japan in the 90s. Man, I want a Corolla A86. I want so many cars. It's not healthy. I probably have more cars on my, like, dream car list than Jay Lano has. Like, no joke. I probably do. There's more cars on that list than Jay Leno, than cars Jay Leno actually has in his garage. It's actually not that bad on the mountain. The R6. Like, it actually is pretty good. It's predictable in a way. Once you get up with like the kind of get over the weird gearing. You have arrived at your destination. But it's like it can be on limiter and third, thus you shift up to fourth and it's like runs out of steam. Which is weird, because this thing has nine hundred horsepower and seven hundred pound feet of torque.
Yeah, like, I don't know. You have arrived at your destination. It doesn't really have that wide of a rear tire either. Like, it has freaking 900 horsepower. It shouldn't really struggle with 275s. It almost has a thousand horsepower. I'm going into the woods. I'm not. But it's like gutless below 5,000 RPM. You have to be on limiter for this thing to work at its best. Once you get used to it, it's actually kind of easy to handle. But you have to keep your speed up. Especially your engine speed. Ice bun. See that? It hooks in third if you're easy on it. I don't get this. It's like it has all drive grip. It's a rally, it's an Audi, it's a rally car. <laughs> the grip levels on this is kind of stupid. If you can keep the engine speed up, it's actually pretty good. I was, I'm kind of surprised when it comes to this car. It's, I wanted it to be really good. I didn't expect it to be really good because it's an Audi and it's understeers and the engine is here instead of there, <laughs> which doesn't, it doesn't. It's not a recipe for great car balance. You want, your, you want your center of mass to be in the center of the car, not not to one side of the car. If it's too much in the rear, in like a Porsche, it will accelerate real well. But it once the rear end goes, it's gone. <laughs> Um, and if it's like an Audi and the engine's pushed all the way forwards, uh, it, uh, will make the front end push a lot. But if the engine is behind the rear axle, most of the mass of the car, like the heaviest part of the car is tr the, usually the transmission, uh, this kind of like transfer cases and diffs, um, and the engine. Like engine and transmission are usually the heaviest part of heavy single pieces of a car. Um, and you want that to be in the center for balance purposes. But this still kind of struggles with the balance a little bit, but you can drive around them fairly easily. So yeah, I'm rambling. 
But thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Also hit the notification button. Don't forget whenever I upload. Hopefully that's not two months. <laughs> Goodbye.